Hello, so apparently early September is a great time to be dividing hostas. So I watched that Fraser Valley Rose Farm video where Jason, um, who's the owner of that farm, he made a video and he said that September is a great time, early September, to divide hostas. So I have um, hostas in this bed. So this bed, it's a difficult bed because a lot of rainwater comes down and down a slope and ends up in this bed washing it out so mostly it's annuals in here i do have a that's a bobo hydrangea so last year i had a percy wiseman um, azalea bush in there and that one didn't make it so i was hoping that maybe this bobo would do good in this spot so far it looks pretty good um, it's got some nice blooms on it that are now turning this pinkish color uh, I've got a generous gardener rose here. It's a little bit wild. It needs to be kind of taken care of, but uh, throws out some nice blooms. It's underplanted with some astilbe. And here I have a drinking gourd hosta here with some ajuga, which is supposed to, you know, the plan is that it's going to get rid of the weeds or at least be a ground cover to choke out the weeds. And I have another drinking gourd hosta. Um, I've got this hosta here, this hosta here, this hosta here. So this one is um, from originally from Costco. I think it was called Queen of the Seas. Normally it's a pretty deep dark color, uh, but it got more sun than normal this year. So it's a little bit bleached out, but that's okay. Um, so I've got a few of those. Actually, it was originally two and it's been divided a few times already. That one did really well. And I think that one's a little big. So I want to divide it and uh, turn it into two plants and just to give you a tour of the rest of the garden so i've got impatience in here because this is a part sun garden so these are impatience these bright pink ones i like those ones the best i also put some lighter pink ones but actually i didn't really they didn't perform as great because they kind of bleached out so you know not the biggest fan of those ones and they just don't strike you like these ones you can see those from a distance they're really amazing so if I'm going to do this again, I'm definitely going to go with this color, not this color. Um, there's some, you know, lighter peach corally ones there. There's this ajuga here that was supposed to be the same as this. This one's called Burgundy Glow Ajuga, that one. And then this one must have just snuck into the six pack. It looks like it's either like a bronze glow or something, but it's definitely a different type of ajuga. But that's okay, I'm not gonna complain. Um, I have a heuchera there, I think it's called Saturn. It's really lovely, it's um, you know, not as big as it should be, I think again, because we are a little bit at the bottom of a slope here. So you can see like up the hill, it kind of slopes down from there and slopes down. Excuse the cardboard, I'm trying to get rid of the grass there, but uh, slopes down into this garden bed. So. Yeah, it's not perfect, but you know, it is what it is. Also this red <laughs> impatient snuck in there, but I love it. It's hidden, but look at that red is so vibrant. I actually would totally do that again. Actually, I think, um, you know, between the pink and the red, those are the two most vibrant colors and I would do that again in a heartbeat. So my nemesis is this weed here. It's called a horsetail weed or mare's tail. And it's kind of dotted throughout the garden. It's really hard to, difficult to get rid of. Just can't deal with that weed. I don't know. Just keep pulling it out as best I can. Try to get the roots, but apparently the roots can go down like eight feet or something crazy. So it's a tough one, but just keep at it. Here I have this white anem anemone, and I think it's called whirlwind, I believe. I'm not really sure. But that one is just great because it blooms around now, around early September, fall. So it's perfect for uh, fall color. And it offsets that bobo quite well. Um, down here, I've got like an annual verbena here that was just popped in. Um, there is a fern here that's not doing great. I might have to move that one because it doesn't look like it's thriving, just barely surviving. These are a couple of impatience that were put in late in the season and uh, yeah not didn't come to their full potential because they were put in late and here I have you know one of my favorites this is a dwarf Alberta spruce which I've talked about before and I'll just give you this other view here from the back side 
starting to rain a bit, so which is nice. This corner, I love it. I love how it's overflowing onto the sidewalk here. So you can see the dwarf Alberta spruce, this hosta. There's that ground cover spreading out. There is a, a few ferns tucked in here and there. I have a pulmonaria. That's a spot on pulmonaria from Proven Winners. And that has amazing spring color. It's like uh, this vibrant pink blue when like barely anything else is blooming. So that is doing great in that spot. And I'm actually thinking about putting more pulmonaria in this bed. I probably can divide that one, but uh, yeah, we'll see how it happens, what happens. And um, I've got this hydrangea in a pot here with some impatience under planted. I've got that on both sides of the shed that I'm standing in right now in the doorway of. And yeah, this corner, the corner right here, um, fortunately, in the rainy season, it just like kind of floods here. So this bed is problematic to say the least because it rains and water just comes down and, you know, just collects here. So everything I had to be very mindful of what I put in here. So I did like plant that dwarf Alberta, Alberta spruce high. I try to plant everything with the crown a little bit raised up and just see what survives. Um, there's a heuchera there. For the most part, heuchera don't do well on this bed because it's too wet for them. But hosta seem to do well. Um, in the summer, it's dry, so there's no issues in the summer. It's just like whether or not they can overwinter or not. And oh yeah, I should mention I put a um, fall in love sweet, sweetly anemone here, which is blooming now, this beautiful pink color. So that's really nice. I'll just give you a close up of that. And this is an astilbe, and it's like, I believe it's a Visions astilbe. And it's this um, purple color, like a deep purple. And I've just left the, you know, the faded stems on because I just like the look of it there. So it's um, just like some winter interest. In the winter we have, you know, the dwarf albatta spruce is the main winter interest in this bed. And then the hostas kind of disappear and come back next year. So I'm going to divide the big one behind the dwarf Alberta spruce. And I'm thinking of actually, since I have so many of this, this one in this garden, I'm going to flip that one. I'm going to put one over there where the drinking gourd host is, where I have two of the drinking gourd hostas, and maybe move one of the drinking gourd hostas into this bed so that there's a little bit more variety. I also did bring my Shadowland Wee hostas here because I'm debating if I should plant one of those in this bed just for, uh, you know, variety. It's little now, but you know, by next year it'll get big. And hostas love moisture, so this is a good place to put them. So yeah, so we'll see what happens. Um, normally there is a fence here between the neighbor's property and ours, but we're just waiting for the neighbor to kind of take care of this retaining wall. It's quite old and falling apart. So it's holding up their land, so we can't really do anything with it. So we're just waiting for them to do that. Once they've, you know, taken care of that wall, then we can put up a fence again, which, uh, you know, there's a post there where the fence used to be. So once we get the fence up again, then the thing is there's uh, gonna be a lot more shade again. So last year, you know, this was more shaded because of the fence. This year I took the fence down because it was a, basically it was a safety hazard. It was leaning over. So I took care of the fence, but, um, because the fence was gone, there was a lot more sun in this garden than normal, which explains the bleaching out of the hostas. Also explains why some of the other items are, other flowers are doing really well in here this year. In any event, uh, yeah, so how do you divide a hosta? Well, got my trusty pitchfork here, excuse the weeds. There's the pitchfork. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around this hosta, the big one here, in a circle and just with a pitchfork, loosen the soil, and then I will dig it up and then see what we have. So once I dig it up, we'll revisit. Okay, so the pitchfork here that I was using, it really did not do much. <laughs> I went around in a circle, did the best I could, trying to loosen the soil, but actually, to be honest, I thought the pitchfork might break. <laughs> so, got a trusty old shovel 
and you can see I'm starting to starting to loosen it. So shovels working well. And also notice this ajuga here has a different color right in the middle. So I'm thinking maybe it's reverting. So maybe that's what happened. It reverted to a um, different variety. So it's supposed to be burgundy glow ajuga. And you can see this middle part here is a different color. So interesting. Okay, so this is uh, not for the faint of heart. It's been a little bit of a struggle. And the other thing is I hate spiders. I don't mind them as long as they keep their distance. And here we go. We have one right in here. To be honest, I almost abandoned this because of that. Because there is a spider in here. He's got a web and, you know, I know he's doing good work in the garden. And they're our friends, but I just, they just give me the heebie-jeebies. Anyways, uh, got it loosened. I was going to like take it onto the grass to divide it, but I think I will just try to do it here. So I'm going to do a close-up to show you there's easy divisions like here you can divide that piece. Um, underneath here you can see there's it's quite dense. So it's easy to just take your shovel, put it through, put it through right there, cut it, and have a new hosta. I only really want to divide this in half, but um, I'll just see how it goes. If it does divide into smaller pieces, that's fine too. But I was going to do it on the grass, but I think I'll just do it in place because it is actually quite heavy with the root ball on there. It's, uh, it rained a little while ago, so it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a bit wet, the soil, it's harder to shake off. Also the spider, I don't want to shake the spider off onto me or something like that. You know, so I'm just trying not to disturb this as much as a little, disturb it as little as possible. So I'm just going to divide it in place and that way it'll be easier to move around as well. So if you're like me and you can't, um, you know, do too much heavy lifting anyways, then this is a good way to do it. Just divide it in place, then you'll have half the weight to carry. All right, so uh, let's see how it goes. Okay, woman versus hosta. Woman one, hosta zero. Well, hosta three, because I got three of them. So there's the shovel. There's the first division I took. Unfortunately, the second one, I had to disturb the spider. So, yep, give me the creeps. But he scurried on under this, this plant here. So I'm not so worried about that anymore. So I've got three hosta divisions. So, yeah, I'm going to... I was thinking about two, but then actually when I took the first one up, the second two were still too big, so... You can see the roots. They're really resilient plants, very tough, you know, so um, these will be fine. I have no problem sacrificing some of the leaves to divide them because I know they'll be just fine. They're really tough plants. So yeah, I'm debating putting one here. Maybe I'll put one of the Chatelain Wee there. It's a nice shady spot, very damp, perfect hosta conditions, perfect snail conditions too. So yeah pasta salad for you know snails and slugs but anyways uh, now I'm gonna do a flip-flop of one of these drinking gourd hostas so we'll see how that goes okay the Sun has come out and we have a new drinking gourd hosta in this bed so this bed didn't have that before and I like how there's space underneath because before there was just no space the hosta was so big it just totally covered that so that hosta that was there has been divided into three. And I have put one division here. So that's looking good. I mounted it up a little bit just because there's a lot of drainage issues here. I popped in one of the Shadowland Wee in the middle so that this can be like a hosta bed. So there's a Queen of the Seas Shadowland Wee and a drinking gourd here. And then, so that's the first division. I actually divided that drinking gourd hosta into two because it was a natural division and I popped that here and again excuse the cardboard I'm just trying to kill the grass here so there's second drinking gourd hosta so the third or sorry the second queen of the seas that one went here under this azalea I think that's a good spot for it and uh, it'll get a lot of shade so it'll get that nice dark green color again and the last division of that Queen of the Seas hosta. I'll just slowly 
This is my garbage bin, so make sure you clean up all your leaves afterwards. You don't want to leave any debris. You also want to make sure you clean up um, any weeds out of the roots of the hosta before you plant them because you don't want to be transporting weeds. And so the last division of the Queen of the Seas hosta went behind this tree. So this is dry shade. I'm not sure how it'll do here. So you can see here I have already have a pulmonaria. It's doing really well. That is doing awesome. This is a Francis William hosta and this big one here. So that one, I don't know, it might be because it's dry shade here. It might not be getting enough water. I have one fern that doing, that's doing great. I have one that is not doing great. So that's interesting. And I have a couple of a still be here. One up there, one down here. They're looking a little bit like they need more water. And this one is a Carex here, down here. So there's that last division. That was the biggest one, I think. And yeah, so that one will hopefully do well here. If not, I don't mind if I lose it because I, you know, um, don't have a problem. I have lots of these. I can divide them, no problem. And uh, hopefully it'll do well here under this. This is actually a pear tree. Hopefully it'll do well. It's dry shade here though. And I have a couple of pumpkin spice. One of my favorite hosta. There's a hellebore under there. This is Dusty Miller, which was supposed to be an annual, but came back. So that's Dusty Miller. There's another Francis William hosta back there that stayed small. Brunnera. I love this Brunnera. This is a ladies' mantle. There's a, a smoke bush here. Um, this is a Miss Kim lilac. Dusty Miller again. There's an aster. Autumn Joy sedum. So this is the back of the garden, and this is under the trees. So it's a shady area, but the trees do suck up a lot of moisture. Because of that, it's dry shade. So, yeah, there's... um only some things that will survive so we'll see how this hosta does here I think it's a nice contrast to this Francis William that one has nice um, cream colored edges it's the end of the season so that's why it's looking so tattered actually both of them are but yeah end of the season so you've seen me dig up this Queen of the Seas hosta which was not as easy as people make it sound but anyways <laughs> divided it into three pieces I dug up a drinking gourd hosta, divided into two pieces, and then I planted all those throughout the garden, and I also planted a Shadowland Wee hosta. So there we are. So that is the task for today. And honestly, like, you know, it's not that easy as people make it sound. Like, you do need to have some strength to put into muscles to put into dividing those hostas. But, uh, it's always nice to get free plants. So now I just gotta make sure I sheet mulch under them and put the uh, cardboard under, then the mulch on top because this place is a magnet for that horsetail weed, which I'm also trying to eradicate all the time. All right, hopefully that was helpful and hopefully this wasn't too long. Thanks so much.